Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Oscar in 2013. I'm here with Jeff Hawkins, Hawkins and you are with uh, two things: Memento.org, which is an open source project, and Grok, which is uh, a company that's a commercial company building a te uh, product built on the technology in Memento.org. So before we get to Grok, which sounds really cool. Let's talk a little bit about what you've been doing. You've been studying the brain for 30-some years now. Yes. And how do you find yourself now at a conference on open source in Portland, Oregon, talking about the brain to computer well, programs? I've, I lived in two worlds for the last 30 years, the computer science world and the neuroscience world. So I started two computing companies, Palm and Handspring. I was a designer of the Palm Pilot and she had a smartphone, and I've done a lot of other computing things. Uh, but throughout all that time, my real passion was neuroscience. And so uh, I pursued that, I, run a, I ran a, a neuroscience institute. And so now in my new company, Nomenta, we actually have, we're merging these two. We have uh, developed some uh, very deep insights into how the brain works, uh, the neocortex works. We've implemented that in software. We've turned it into a commercial product. We have other people interested in using, we publish this, so people are interested in these algorithms. And so we've taken our, commercial implementation of these brain algorithms and put them in an open source project. And that's how I ended up at OSCON. Okay. And so today you mentioned the cortical learning algorithm, algorithm yeah. CLA. Yeah. And can you unpack that a little bit and explain what it is at a, at a level that people sure. at this conference I'll, will I'll, understand? I'll just trying to make two points about it. Um, First of all, we're interested in the neocortex. It's the big wrinkly thing on the top of your head. That's the source of intelligence. It's like the blanket you showed this morning. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that, it's about the size of a dinner napkin. Yeah. And it's a memory system. And, it's, and the, your intelligence is all based on a, a very clever type of memory. And that we have, what we figured out, the cortical learning algorithm, is sort of the, the core component of that, how the neocortex works. It's something that's repeated over and over and over again. It is a learning... Uh, technology for basically discovering patterns in very high speed data streams. So your sensors, like your ears and your eyes and your skin, are high speed data streams, streaming data into the brain, yeah. and the cortex builds models from that, it, it generates behavior from that. We figured out the core me mechanism for it. If you were thinking neuroscience terms, it's like what a layer of realistic neurons do in the neocortex. And so you're bringing that into machine learning, into... We're bringing into machine learning. Our product called Grok is actually a, a machine learning application to, uh, to discover patterns and make predictions about machine-generated data. But it's also, uh, I believe, this is the path to machine intelligence, to, to build machines that work on the same principles as the brain. So not just learning, but intelligence. The whole thing. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about how the brain works in building a model of the world and how it acts on that model. And that's what intelligence is all about. And so we're get, we have a core component of that. We think it's going to be very important in the coming years. So will this ever get to a point to where machines can learn like humans? Absolutely. And adapt like humans? Well, we're doing that today at a very small scale. Uh, our technology today is implementing a very small part of the neocortex, but it's working on the exact same principles. It's a learning system. You feed it data, it learns, and it adapts continuously. So we need to get, what we do need is it's the scale from where we are today, which is like you know, the millionth of the size of a human brain, uh, to something uh, more significant. But it's actually doing the exact same thing right now. It's learning, it's adapting, it's just doing it at a small scale. So if you fast forward yourself 50 years from now, are we gonna look back at this day and, and you, you're talking about Numenta and, and the uh, new pick? as something that, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe it took them so long to get to the, where we are now? I, are we ever going to get there? Let's take me out of the picture and let's yeah, say, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where I think we are today is like 1950 in the computing industry. In the computing industry in 1950, yep. we had just started building commercial computers. They were just starting to be valuable. People were excited about it. And yet we had decades of amazing transformations and technology improvements. That's exactly where we are to now. Yeah. So we're 1950 We for are 1950 brain. for machine intelligence. Yeah. You go out 50 years from now, you're going to be absolutely blown away by what's happening in this field. It's going to equal and probably rival the impact that computers have had. Machines that are truly learning and intelligent are going to be amazing. And uh, I, I don't know if today or whatever, but it's happening. And, and that's part of the message we're bringing to OSCON. Are you at all ever fearful about 
our fate and when this happens? No, I actually think this is tremendously beneficial for humanity. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, there are people who have different opinions about this, but I think they're, they're off base. The, these are not machines that are, I'm not talking about machines that are like humans or they're going to pass the Turing test, there's going to be some robot sitting here. It's not like that. These are machines that are essentially learning machines. They take, they have senses about the world, they can act in the world. They're not, they're not things that want to reproduce and take over. They're just tools for humanity. And so to me, it's like the same way computers. Computers are hugely beneficial for, for our, our world and our planet and our society. We're building, these are going to be machines that are just tremendously valuable tools. And it'll be like brains that can be, never get tired and, and can think a million times faster than human brains. That would be great, yeah. That would be great. I think it would be great. Yeah, it's, yeah. And we're, it's the way we're going to explore the universe. It's the way we're going to figure out the difficult problems. We're going to have tools to help us do that. Well, Jeff, thank you very much. I can't wait Mike, to see where this all goes. Well, I hope this we're around wonderful. in 50 years, Mike. But I'm not sure I can yeah. guarantee that on my yeah. part. <laughs> you neither. Thank, thank you. you very much.